What is going on guys? We are back with another video today in our Raiders franchise and of course we just came off of a, I mean an entertaining one, but a very unfortunate loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, locking them up for the division and realistically maybe even locking them up for the AFC's number one seed. We obviously dropped to 7-6, and six, which isn't actually that bad of course. Uh, you know, we could have done worse. We obviously also had the opportunity to do better but headed on to week 15 against another very tough opponent in the Cleveland Browns. I mean, I don't want to look too far ahead, but going against the Broncos and the Colts after, it's not an easy finish to the, to the season, but we do still have that opportunity to make the postseason, and of course, uh, that would be amazing. I, d I don't expect it, but that would be pretty insane. I suppose let's get right on to it, though. See if we maybe even get a breakout for the first time in I don't even know how many weeks. And we do not. I wonder if that loss actually knocked us out of the postseason rank, and it did. We were holding the number seven spot, and now we are officially out of the playoffs. But for some reason, I don't know if there was an injury, but the Browns are only a 4-9 and nine team. I'd have to assume there was some injuries. We have to take a look at that real quick. Uh, just like you have to, oh my god, I forgot about our injuries, in fairness. But let's take a look at the Browns, and they look healthy unless they just got back. I have no idea how a team with that much potential and that much star power could even possibly be under 500. But yeah, speaking of those injuries, we obviously are missing those guys, and Simpson has played a decent job uh, in replacing Richie Incognito, not that it's easy to do. And then obviously we're going to have a full game now with no Henry Ruggs going up against a very high star-powered defense. It's going to be a big running game, I would imagine. And if not, it's going to come down to Darren Waller, Brian Edwards, and of course Renfro to step up. We also do need to sign a wide receiver. And, uh, Willie Sneed is actually back, but he's had a bit of a slow uh, return to practice. So don't know how much we're going to get him going. So we definitely need to sign a wide receiver too, just to guarantee things. And uh, we might have to drop someone, uh, maybe some sort of backup because uh, obviously not everyone has played for us. Looking at the defensive side of things, you know, we've had some ups and some downs. Uh, Trayvon Mullen uh, knows all about that as he has been probably our most consistent player, but obviously not having a great time against the Chiefs at all this season. And uh, obviously we got to pick things up because I think that is really where the main part of our team is lacking. Obviously last game you could say that, but the Chiefs can do it to anyone. So we're not going to hold it against them too much for that one particular performance. And even with a record-setting performance, it's not going to be enough as Patrick Mahomes does take the Player of the Week award over Derek Carr. Denzel Ward with two interceptions and a couple of tackles. Great. We just have to go against him right now. Nothing big. As we're going to the weekly strategy, we were able to re-sign Tyree Cleveland to a three-year deal. We re-signed Daniel Carlson to a four-year deal. Absolutely deserves it. And, of course, Alec Ingold, I believe, to a four-year deal as well. For their offense, it does seem like they are running the ball very well. So I would assume that is the way we're going to try to defend. So defend outside, that seems to be the way they're playing. Going to have the full practice squad out there. I mean, it seems like stamina is, you know, the fatigue is looking all right. So let's move on to the offense now, which, of course, apparently their defense looks really bad. But I would not put money on going against that, uh, that Miles Garrett guy without any pressure. So blitz counters, especially with our uh, weakened offensive line due to injury, and, of course, our weakened receiving group due to injury seems like the best bet. Uh, of course, a little bit of a rough one. So I think we are going to practice the offensive line split again. And everyone else starts. Here we are in Cleveland, of course, wearing some color rush uniforms. Baker Mayfield, obviously the main man over there. Not maybe their best player, but the most important player to that team's success, obviously. And, and stopping him is going to prove to be the most key thing to our success. Will it happen? I'm not 100% sure. Once again, I really do think injuries must have played a factor in this team's season record because there's just no way those players are going to put up a 4-9 season. I mean, that coaching staff has got to be in the hot seat, injury or not. And obviously, we do not want to join them as uh, we had a pretty good start of the season. We're kind of falling apart a little bit lately. And we're hoping not to get right back to f at 500. Even if we get a tie against a team like this, I'm absolutely all for it. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to run the ball. We're going to have to stop the run. This could be a very quick game when it's all said and done. Now, of course, there is one other X factor that I'm not really mentioning. 
And it's that if you were to like and subscribe, we'd have a better chance of winning. Let's go. We we really wouldn't, but it would make me feel better. I mean, look at the hit stick. I seen you in the back, Johnny. You hit subscribe. We got a hit stick. It's it's simple math. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Of course, looking at the numbers, uh, it seems a little low. I'd say he maybe was injured for a week or two, but I don't. I mean, those numbers aren't looking like you know he was out for the season type things. So. Who were they missing? I don't know. I really could not tell you, but we'll see very quickly if they are the real deal or not, I suppose, as we're about to get going in this matchup, as they are going to look to run the ball early, and they will. Chubb is going to gain about eight yards out the gates, which is definitely not ideal for us. Of course, his numbers looking very good with many games left to play over 1,000 yards, over 10 touchdowns, and what appear to be over four yards per carry by... Quite a quite a margin as Cream Hunt, the other very good running back, two starting caliber running backs on that team over the middle, huge pop, but of course he's going to hold on to that for the first down. Mister Higgins, with well, that sounds weird. Mister, he sounds like an old teacher. Really trusting these corners with a little bit of press man, and it works out the best. Otherwise, that you know the safety wouldn't have been up there, or the linebacker wouldn't have been able to be up there because obviously the safeties. Kind of cause a little bit of panic of that offensive line. Second and 10 now from the 47 up the middle. And huge hit by Kwiatkowski. They're going to gain three, but it's going to be a very, very nice third and seven for our team. Got to get a stop here as they are moving down the field. Maybe not as fast as we expected, but they're still moving. Max Crosby gets locked up. He's going to take the shot. Arnett is all over that. Maybe not actually. Huge swat at the last second, and they will be forced to punt. When it's Odell Beckham one-on-one -on -one like that for a spectacular grab, especially what appears to be prime time, definitely uh, had a lot of bad thoughts coming to my mind. And what is that shank of a punt? A 16-yard punt. You might as well go for it next time. Obviously, looking at the numbers... We don't want to talk about those interceptions. He's a gunslinger. He's he's on par to even break the regular season yards record at this rate. Uh, but, of course, we got to get those takeaways or those turnovers knocked down a little bit. Otherwise, once again, you're not going to make the postseason turn the ball over like that. A little bit of RPO action, a little late off the line, so we hand it off and really good cut. Of course, really good job on the edge by, I believe, the fullback, the man Ingold, who just got paid earning that contract so far early on. Really good play, obviously, leading to a second and five now. Stretch look to the outside, and not as clean a blocking as I thought we were going to get. Will gain a few, but nothing major, and obviously it's going to now be an early third and four now. Looks like they could be coming with the overload blitz. Might be bringing six here, and I don't know what they brought, but Kenyon Drake is wide open to the outside, and that's going to be an easy first down. Single high, they keep coming with this like bluff play. And they are going to drop him back. And, of course, we're going to just take the underneath. Zay Jones is going to gain about five and a half, six. But he gets stripped. And the ball is recovered by Anthony Walker. Zay Jones, not really getting that much game time this season, gets absolutely robbed on the strip. Oh, my Lord. You cannot let those corners take the ball off you like that. Such a good start by the defense, and then the offense is the one to actually sell first. And I have to say first because defense being on the field already twice like this, definitely not good for their chances of uh, playing a perfect game. Inside, and Nick Chubb is still running. One to beat, cannot, and there's a late holding call. What is this going to be? It was super late coming out of there, but the refs called it. Maybe a little bit of favoritism. I'm not 100% sure, but second and 11 now after a very good run, and they're going to look for the curls, and it's not going to really matter too much as they're going to get a quite a bit of yards. Not quite the first down, though, so third and four instead of that first down run by Chubb. See if the defense can get something going here. We're going to dial up a little bit of a... Of a blitz, somewhat of a uh, disguise. Kwiatkowski coming in there so late, though. And of course, just bounces right off as Arnett is just, he's trying to hold on for dear life on these routes, and he is not having a good time. From 34, first and goal, back to that ground game. Why wouldn't you? And Chubb's going to break off, get some blocks, one to beat. Does not beat Trayvon Merrick to the 13. Inside and behind. The coverage, Austin Hooper gets it. 
Baker Mayfield, very decisive, very accurate, and of course made all the right reads, and they do score a touchdown after our fumble mistake. Kenyon Drake, I do feel like a big return from him today could be massive for our chances of winning, but at the same time, that's a bit too deep. We're not gonna we're not gonna risk it just for some luck. Right inside, handoff to Drake. Nice little cutback, gains about four. I don't want to get too patient because I feel like the longer the drive takes, it's just the bigger chance for us to have a mistake happen. But at the same time, it's it's kind of what teams have been giving us this season. And maybe that's why we actually do fumble the ball really bad by us. I mean, there is some options there, and we just don't take it. We play it way too patient, and of course, now it's a third and six. We have Waller on the wheel. I kind of like this. I kind of like what we have here. And that's going to go to Zay Jones, who obviously makes a really big play after the fumble. And we, we could have cut it inside. We saw a uh, joke coming in there, but... Unfortunately, uh, the D-line broke off, so it really didn't matter where we went. We were kind of had. And Hunter Renfro, this is where I would have loved to streak a guy like Ruggs because they look like they're coming with the blitz. we got to get this ball out. And they are going to be coming with the blitz. Waller on the inside is pretty open. And almost a pick play there is uh, our far left receiver, maybe Willie Sneed on the play, almost came in. I think it was Brian Edwards. Almost came in and took it, but instead kind of went underneath for a little, a little cheeky chip. Play action, Foster could be my guy. The delay to Waller, really good play there, and we gain about five. Kenyon Drake up the middle, and we're going to try to cut it back, and it really didn't matter. We were completely done from there. The The Browns' defensive line is absolutely winning early in this one. Hunter Renfro on the quick throw could be the move. Foster Moreau is now the starting tight end on this play. And we have Kenyon Drake wide open, and he will score. Tricked the defense, the interior of the Browns, a little sus at times and went exactly at that spot. So many moving pieces and they're all trying to cover, you know, the end of the route, but they don't see Drake slip in underneath and the man will score a massive touchdown, exactly what we needed after a very, very slow start on offense. We'll tie the game up and we're basically at square one as uh, they did get the ball first. Our turnover sucked, but it came off of a, uh, a forced punt. So once again, squared up. You know, not a bad little comeback here. Not a little bad turnaround. Try to get uh, Odell layered up over there. And not bad, actually. Only a gain of two for Chubb, which is basically like stopping an uh, inexperienced running back to like negative five. As Crosby off the edge, tries to get the spin. Can't! And kwiatkowski has got to accelerate to that. He's got to go with his gut. Bringing a little heat off the edge. Maybe the wrong edge, though, which is worrisome. And it really doesn't matter. And they're going to block it up perfectly. Max Crosby's going to get the coverage sack. Baker Mayfield's down, and we're going to force on a punt again. And this punt is also not very good. And nice little chip at the end. That was kind of, kind of sneaky by Carl Joseph. Kind of looked like he wasn't paying attention. Kind of wasn't there. And then... And as soon as the ball is coming out, he got a chip on him. And obviously, it gave us a little bit of yard. Just a little risky to try and field that. But it worked out as Kenyon Drake, who's having an okay start to the game, will take it for a gain of about six. Play action look. Could be looking for Hunter Renfro deep down the middle. Could be looking for some freaking blocks, and we don't get them. Obviously, that play took a long, long, long time to develop. But yeah, we, we got to get rid of that ball. Third and 19 now already. Kenyon Drake on the screen. Yeah, these receivers without rugs, you really realize how slow of a group we have. And on the screen, Kenyon Drake will get a clean look at it. Tries to get outside, does. And he's short. He's at the 50. Thought maybe we had a chance there. Of course, that 50-yard uh, line mark is definitely a little misleading as well. Uh, you got to punt the ball when your defense is playing the way it is, and you have a, you know, an okay punter. Except, you know, me, who's a god punter. This is, you know, I'm talking about the actual player. God damn it. Awful punt. Basically a 31-yard punt. No, that's not even 29. The math is wrong, too. Somebody fire that math guy. Who Who's the one that came up with the, the numbers on that? Still fire me. First and 10, and... I mean, we are doing better. Definitely doing better on Nick Chubb, of course... You know, before the last couple of plays, he probably would have been, you know, over five yards per carry. Now he's, he's kind of dipping a bit as Diablo is now going to try to get him and really good cut by, back by Chubb. And how in the world does he turn that into seven? I do not know. Of course, no messing around here, but at the same time, worrisome as we are 
committing quite a bit to the ground, and we're still not going to get him. Really, really good job off the uh, off the edge by Arnett. Is I mean, he was really one to beat, but Odell missed the block. Of course, thankfully, even though it was a huge gainer, we stop him to minimal. And Nick Chubb just absolutely stiff arms him. Stiff arms him again. Littleton jumps on his back. He's still not done. Oh, my Lord. Talk about stopping Nick Chubb, and that went right out the window. Come on, boys. We have all the linebackers in. We just can't stop them. I know they have a really good O-line, too, but we got to get in there and make a play on this man as Chubb is going to gain about three, of course, now in the zone. And now we're going to get a little risky, not actually bring, you know, the biggest front in the world, but, of course, bringing a little bit of a delayed blitz here. And, ooh, Cream Hunt gets upended. Another three-yard gain. They really haven't thrown the ball much, but you don't really need to when you're playing the way they are on the ground. But at the same time, you can't just, like, leave them have an opening. And that's a potential touchdown there. I mean, I'm kind of glad they went down short. I know that guarantees the first down, but, I mean, they almost guarantee themselves seven if he takes that deep. All right, let's bring these freaking linebackers in. Quick throw to the outside. Great, great job there by Trayvon Merrig. Kind of played off the line a little bit just because I knew we had the help. And now the two-minute warning. This isn't the worst spot for us to be in because it seems like we have a pretty good chance of getting the ball back. But at the same time, if they play this out perfectly, they could take the lead no matter what and hold it uh, right before half and you know not give us a chance really. McCoy, nice little spin move inside. McCoy misses. Could be picked on the underthrow, and it is. Trayvon Merrig. One to be. Gets the spin. Cuts inside, slips Baker Mayfield down to the 41. The pressure in his face, across his body. Baker with the errant throw. And Trayvon Merrick gets his first pick of his young career. Clellan Farrell, of course, with the help of Gerald McCoy, forcing that one. And Trayvon gets it. Let's go. And is Darren Waller injured? I have not seen him since his pretty big play. I don't know what happened to him. We're going to take that late, and thankfully it was overthrown. Has he had a chance to jump that? Yeah, I have not seen Darren Waller yet. And, uh, I, I mean, it says that he's he's nursing some injury, but he should be fine. I don't know. As we're going to go inside here, that's a little bit of pass interference. Uh, bad holding call earlier. Bad play there. I mean, I just got to assume that, uh, obviously, this officiating crew is not up to their standards today. Zay Jones potentially... And we're going to be in some trouble. Just going to take the shot and not all that bad considering the pressure. And unfortunately, I mean, it means something because obviously it would have given them points. And now we're going to pin them back in some pretty bad field position. But it sucks we weren't able to take, you know, that takeaway and make it into some points. But we're going to pin them to the 17-yard line. Seven all. Obviously a, a very low-scoring game. We thought it was going to be a low-scoring game because of the running but really, it's just because both teams are kind of just making mistakes. Defenses are playing pretty well, though, right now, in fairness, to the outside. And we're going to give up a little bit of room. Huge hit by Abram. But he's going to turn that into some yardage. And obviously, they're going to try and hurry up a little bit here as they do still have a chance to try and put some points on the board, especially with those timeouts. A bit of clock wasted there, though. As you can see, they're going to drain this all the way down. A little confused by that one, to be honest. And he's going to throw it out to the flat again. And he's going to have so much room. Nobody's out there. And he's going to get out of bounds all the way to the 47-yard line. Defense is not playing well right now. And I'm not sure what's going on with our subs. But somebody may get fired today. I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, Arnett's supposed to be playing the edge. And he's just not out there. He's not, he's not playing the boundary. There you go. Get back to the freaking boundary. That's where we need you, buddy. And to the outside, it's, I guess we need someone else because that, of course, was his side. Even though he's playing the deep zone, he's just nowhere in sight at all. That right guard of theirs is, is pretty decent. But look at the play, and he's going to bring him down for the sack. There you go, Clellan. I mean, no pressure. You're going to have yourselves a bad time anyways. Clellan gets beat this time. He's going to try to step back. Can't get back there in time. And, of course, that will be a first down. Last time out is wasted and maybe a little too conservative. I know they threw a, a pick in the red zone last time or near the red zone, but yeah, I mean, I think you probably take a shot here still. Of course, they won't. They will get their three, so who am I to talk? 13 seconds remaining unless Kenyon Drake brings this back for a touchdown or something really far. 
that likely will end the first half. We're actually going to run it with uh, Kenyon Drake here. A little bit faster. And, ooh, a little bit of a lane. But unfortunately, we're just going to call it there. It's down three. We do get ball, I believe, going up against a very talented team. I'm not, I'm not too upset with that. Obviously, left some points on the board for sure. But also took some points off of their board. So, you know, it's never going to be just a completely clean game. I'm not too worried. But, yeah, we definitely need to get the ground game going a lot more. And uh, also get our matchups correct, specifically on defense. I mean, some of these uh, these plays just not going the way we need to, them to. So our offensive focus is going to be inside run, and our defensive focus is going to be inside run. I said it was going to be one of those running games. It has been on their side so far. We've been okay in the past game, but, yeah, our run game has been awful. Kenyon Drake on the return is going to get a little bit of room. One to beat, and really good job by – is that actually the punter? Yeah, it is the punter. Really good job there. That was, that's a touchdown if he's not there. All right, we're going to start with a pass, though, just to, just to make things a little bit cleaner. Nice little bump there, and Edwards to the 46. You know, they're kind of keying in on the run on the first play there, so obviously we're not going to just walk right down in on them as uh, they're going to be doing it again. But Kenyon Drake obviously gets a little bit of a run-up on this, so I feel a little bit better about this actual call, and rightfully so. Kenyon Drake to the outside, slips it. Down to the 26-yard line. Really big run of 20 on the play. And, of course, as you can tell, there's uh, your eyes don't deceive you. There has been a lacking of Darren Waller and a lacking of Josh Jacobs. And that's because both players are actually injured. We don't know the extent of the injury, but hopefully nothing too serious as Hunter Renfro is going to not catch the ball. Looked a little bit too far upfield. Must not have seen it. The, uh, the guy coming right up on him there. That's an unfortunate miss. Uh, to the left side, if that left tackle can beat Miles Garrett, this misdirection kind of play could work out, and it does. Second and 10 turn into a third and seven. I thought it was going to be a four or five, but unfortunately was not. And we're going to be looking for the double drag play with, of course, Zay Jones, who converted a first down on that before. Maybe look for it again as Hunter Renfro is pretty open. Can he catch the edge? And he can. Barely, barely beating Hill, who, of course, forced a fumble from Zay Jones earlier. A little slow there. And, of course, we get the first down, thankfully. Read option. Look with Derek Carr. We might just have to hold that one back because, obviously, they look like they're ready for it. So we're going we're gonna to run this instead. And Edwards could take a shot to the end zone. Once again, he is all oh, crap. I forgot they're in the zone. We do get it off in time. They do bring the double team, though. And that's... Very risky. It looks pretty clear for Renfro, but we can't get them to run the right routes because we're in the red zone, and that's obviously their ability. And we do get it out, thankfully. Let's, let's just not get baited. And we don't, and they just leave them. I don't know what they're doing. All-out blitz to try and stop the run, but Hunter Renfro is just plain open there. All right, a couple of chip runs that all lead up to, uh, you know, a couple of first downs to the 45-yard line. And here comes another one, and stiff arm. And we almost make him lose a yard, which would have been clutch, because obviously it knocks him out of the zone, but obviously it would means nothing, because it didn't knock him out of the zone. And up by four, but defense obviously having a hard time of it so far. And a quick throw underneath, Abram misses, and that will be yet another first down. A little confusing that the uh, first down marker is, like, really dark, <laughs> and the midfield is like, look at me, look at me, I'm midfield. It's like, okay, yeah, thank you. Of course, Clown Ferrero gets put down hard. But not a big win. I was about to say not a big win for them, but a really not a big win for us. As, of course, Gerald McCoy is down a second time this season, I believe. Thankfully, we do have Hankins, who really hasn't played a whole lot of snaps because of Clellan Farrell, but we're glad to have him now. It's Clellan Farrell, speaking of, forcing the hit. Almost a fumble. Was that an empty hand? Pectoral strain, of course, are going to keep Hankins in there. As, man, this man. Colin Farrell's having himself a season already up to 11 sacks on the year and still some more to go. Max Crosby can't get off the edge. He's taking the shot and Abram is nowhere to be found. Odell with the touchdown. That's too easy. Baker misses him by a lot, but it's Odell Beckham. What do you expect? Easy touchdown. What actually happened on the play there? And he just gets beat. I mean, he's caught covering a guy he's just not supposed to cover. Actually, maybe it isn't his fault. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually... 
That is the outside corner's fault. For one, why is Trayvon Mullins so far over? Not even on uh, the other side. Arnett, the, the less developed corner, is that far out. And Abram, I mean, he does an okay job of getting back to the middle, but he just doesn't run. You know, he gets back there kind of sneakily, but maybe he just miscommunicated with the safety, but there is nobody there. And it's not even Abram at all. It's freaking Merrick. And, of course, Merrick, it's not his job either. But long story short, no matter whose fault it technically is, it's yet again another blown coverage by the Las Vegas Raiders, simply put. Edwards, once again, we tried this play once before, couldn't get it. And that is a tough throw, and there's no way he nails it. He does. It's Derek Carr, Josh Jacobs, and Waller returning. Finally, perfect time as ever. And here comes the convoy, gaining about eight, maybe nine on the play. The boys are back, and the Browns are scared. Up the middle again, Jacobs, not waiting for any man, gains about four. First down. We now have the play action look with Hunter Renfro kind of leaking out towards the end zone. And here we see a wide open Josh Jacobs. Can't get the truck move. Really good play as, you know, freed up Jacobs for a wide open look underneath with uh, obviously Hunter Renfro sneaking in behind. Quick slants look could go to the fullback, and we do, and he drops it. Of course, not an easy catch for a fullback, but. I mean, he was open early, very, very early. And, I mean, it just felt like the smart call, and it just wasn't apparently. Come with the blitz. Could be a Zay Jones look. And it is wide open over the middle, down to the four. Chance for a score. We're running out of time for uh, the read option, so if we're ever going to call it, this could be the moment to do it. And they are going to read it, but they should have read the running back because he's in for the score, but he's not. Down to the one, second and goal. Who else but Jacobs right up the middle? Let's get a block. We don't, but he doesn't need it. In with the truck. And we're now back in the lead. These primetime games do be hitting different, though. And I, I will never say that again. I apologize. <laughs> I just sound like a, a parent trying to act cool in front of their kids, and it doesn't work. And speaking of it doesn't work, stopping Nick Chubb, it, it's something that just doesn't work. Of course, we uh, didn't give up a touchdown there, but it's not too far off of what almost just happened. Of course, McCoy is back in as well, thankfully. You know, we left the outside, but that's okay. No, it's not. Huge hit on Odell. I feel like I haven't seen much of Jarvis Landry. It's really just been a lot of running and a lot of Odell Beckham. Uh, of course, uh, Higgins obviously had a, a catch or two, but yeah, really not seen a whole lot of Landry. Nice little press inside and over the middle. Once again, these running backs have been near impossible to contain. Really good tackle there, but I mean, it's still going to be at another first down. Defense just completely irrelevant here. We have the wrong matchups. We're going to just come, you know, change to a cover two last second. Come on, Max Crosby. Can't get the spin, and what is he doing? Trayvon can't get there. Arnett this time. Odell Beckham is just working our young corners. And there has been a bit of scoring here late in the third into the fourth quarter now as they're just crushing anything we throw at them. Of course, it is a cover two, so technically it's not actually Arnett's fault. But Arnett, he just kind of lets him. I mean, he pushes him to the boundary, which is not bad. And I get it. He does have to get down there for Kareem Hunt. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, you know what? This is tough. This is really tough. You know, obviously zone is zone, right? Like there's openings in in most of the spots. You gotta if you're if you're um, who's this Trayvon Merrig? You gotta just commit over to the outside there, as you can see. I mean, he's just gonna burn right there. I, I mean, I think realistically, nah, that that's all our net. He, he's gotta follow him there. Is uh, of course we have who's this? Uh, Moro is gonna be taking Cream Hunt. It's gonna be a big gain no matter what. You look at this defense and it just looks awful, but. It's not a touchdown if he goes to Kareem Hunt. And, you know, he, he took the wrong read. Now the earth is trembling. Not really ideal, but we'll see what we can come up with. As we had a couple of looks, Hunter Renfro is absolutely wide open. Zay Jones with some of the best wide receiver blocking I've seen all season. Nice gain of about 20. You know that defense is like, just keep up with him. I don't know if we can stop him. And I also agree, I don't know either. As Waller... It's going to be open, but unfortunately that pass rush 
It's been winning. It's definitely uh, definitely not had much troubles today. Looking deep down the field, and we're just not even going to have a chance. I can't even throw to the underneath. Up the middle, Andrew Billings comes up with the sack. Offensive line has definitely not played well today. All right, here's the play call. We're just going to take the underneath and chance to move for the first down there, but Edwards off the ball really slow there. Of course, it is going to set up a much better punt, but overall, definitely not what we wanted. As far as the punt goes, give us a bounce. Damn it. Another chance to pin them deep, and it was blown. Got to put some hang time on it or something, but of course, that's not what we do, and they will have a chance to really end the game here. So defense definitely needs to make a play. Really good job by Clellan. Huge hit on the knees by Trayvon Merrig. And we fall down at the line, Kwiatkowski, and then he's just going to truck right over Clellan Farrell. I mean, if he's going to run over Clellan Farrell like that. I mean, there's really not much chance, even if uh, Kwiatkowski doesn't fall down. Obviously, at this point, it's it's time to go home or go big. Obviously, it's usually said the other way, but, I mean, we're under pressure. Leave me alone. As he's going to slip off again, Nick Chubb breaking every tackle. It's going to take a village, and thankfully, we had a village on that play. Second and eight from the 37-yard line. Oh, Lord, it's a five wide. We're not looking good. Come on, Clellan. You're having a game today. It's going against the double team. No one else on the team is showing up. And huge hit by Merrick, who, once again, he's he's definitely a guy showing up. Obviously, a couple of blown coverages. That's what we're, you know, we're expecting to get from someone like him, though. So as long as he's hitting and he's taking decent angles for the tackles, I'm cool with it. All right, Clellan. They're going to pass it again, and we miss with Merrick. Of course, he recovers a gain of about seven. I'm not liking it. Back to the blitz. Do you run, Kim? I think you do. I think you just bail out for the run. It's got to be a run. And we bail out for it, but Chubb's still going to gain a yard, but he is short. Third and two. I think it's time to run the engage eight. You still have a chance to cover, but obviously you need to do something here to get them off the field. And Chubb gets stopped. J.C. Treader's also injured. Is that Gerald McCoy? Nah, I'm calling a timeout. No, 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 no. Why in the world? I, it's, I hate to lose a timeout there, but we are not going to try to return this freaking punt. I do not trust them to punt this ball. I don't know if there's a bit of win, but why in the world are you not kicking the field goal here? It's very questionable. Of course, the ball is going to actually go in the end zone as well. Once again, like a 16-yard punt. I feel like that's like... The second time that's happened today. 4-12 in the fourth from the 20. We could have went to Waller, but we also have someone a little deeper. Willie Sneed showing up. Haven't seen much of him this year because, of course, he's been injured. Welcome back, buddy. Could go deep with Edwards. Obviously, Sneed on the inside could be the look. It kind of depends on what they want to give us. And, oh, my, throw that. We can't. Thankfully, he doesn't fumble. Only a two-yard sack. Good job by Derek Carr to try and get out of there, but... Once again, man, that, uh, that that offensive line of ours is not doing well. Uh, of course, they do have a really good pass rush. What do you expect? But screen pass on second down. They do see it, but they get blocked. Really good cutback. And, of course, down to the 47-yard line, not bad. Third and three. They were going very hard to the outside to try and get uh, Kenyon Drake. But, of course, the cutback. I mean, he caught many ankles on that one. And then from the 47-yard line, we're going to trust Josh Jacobs up the middle. And the big man, I think, gets it. I think he does. He does. Oh, that was clutch. Good job, dude. I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. As soon as as soon as soon we cut that to the left side, I was, I was a little worried about the decision-making. Maybe had him. We're going to take that shot as we're... Once again, under pressure, Jacob's going to take it out of bounds for a gain of actually pretty good yardage, about five, almost six. I really do not want to have to make our guys play defense again. So if we can just end it here, I am all about that. While on the outside, it kind of depends on how much we can get Jones to make him bite. And not really much. And that's going to be, once again, another pressured throw. Open, but not open. That one, I mean, I can't really blame the offensive line too much. Third and five. We got to get some points here. And we're going to take that underneath to Jones. Don't fumble. He's slipping tackles. Really good play for 11. Takes us to the two-minute warning. And, I mean, um, barring any mistakes, we're at least tying this game up. Got a couple of out routes. 
I really want Edwards to beat deep, but he just really hasn't. I mean, I'm almost debating just calling it off. Eh, whatever, we'll hike it. And Carr, throw it! So open! I'm so sorry, Z! Look at him go! One-handed catch! Slips it down to the six! Jimmy's looking at the inside and the left, and we didn't see the open man! But finally got it out there. Really good play, and you can see, once again, the one-handed catch. Unbelievable. So now the clock is obviously on our side. I don't want to give them too much time to score with, so obviously we're going to be running it a little bit. They have all three timeouts. you got to assume they're going to call them each time we play here, if there isn't each time. And that's the reason why we say that is Jacobs almost gets it. And, of course, you don't, uh, you don't need to call a timeout if you're Cleveland. If we get injured again, how many players are going to get injured? Of course, it seems like Foster Moreau is the guy this time. Alex, there you go, Alex Ingold with the touchdown up the middle, giving us the lead with about a minute left in the game. All right, we're going to be bringing some uh, coverage, but also a little bit of a blitz off the edge with the cornerback and wide open over the middle, Odell. It's just going to gain a ton. Of, I mean, this guy literally just cannot be stopped. Manned up. Odell on the outside. Doesn't matter. Robertson is going to get beat as well. All three timeouts already to the 23-yard line. This is unbelievable. I mean, how do you actually stop this? I thought it was the Chiefs. It's just everyone with any receiver that's better than average. Of course, huge hit by Littleton there. We got to force a fumble Seems like that might be the only way to actually come out of this one with a victory. Man coverage. Come on, Clellan. Get in there, buddy. Over the middle is looking pretty open. Kareem Hunt is going to score with only 17 seconds left. Our defense is absolute butter. All right, Kenyon Drake. Any time other than now would be, uh, would be irrelevant. This is where we need to go and be ballers. All right. And that, please drop it. Thankfully, he does. Nine seconds left. Not going to change much, but try to roll out for a big play. Could not do it. We need to get to around the 40-yard line if we want a chance at this thing. Renfro is kind of the big look for us. And we're not even going to get the ball off. This offensive line has been brutal. Is there a chance to try and slant Edwards and maybe turn it into something real quick? And, I mean, we do get a little bit closer, but it's still going to be probably out of Derek Carr's reach to the end zone. But, oh, well, I suppose you got to try it. Come on, Derek Carr. Unload a monster. And we're not even going to get a chance to throw it. Oh, my Lord, with this offensive line. Got the double team off the edge. Even the center probably gets a little piece of him. Can't even throw a Hail Mary. Unbelievable. That is just a heartbreaking loss. Defense giving up insta yardage down the field. I mean, like, it was just complete butter. Literal butter on defense. And, of course, offense there, just not enough time. Just simply not enough time to get down the field. And, obviously, they dialed it up as much as possible. Miles Garrett gave twice the effort as normal, which is, is already one and a half times too much for us to handle. And unfortunately, Cleveland will win. Obviously, that record really proves nothing of theirs. Just a couple of really bad losses, I would assume. Maybe some injuries. But overall, we drop back-to-back -back games. A hell of a fight, obviously. But unfortunately, it will be a loss. A game I did expect to lose, but I saw that record. And I saw, the, you know, some of their plays and some of the mistakes they were making. I thought maybe we had a chance. And unfortunately, we did. But it wasn't enough. And of course... The pressure. It's just lacking. I know they have a great offensive line. That plays a huge factor in it, but there's just not enough pressure going around here. No upgrade points either. Unfortunately, we're just going with a loss. I mean, there's really not much more to say. Seven all on our uh, our season. Seven to seven for the record. Broncos, Colts, and the Chargers next. Games that could all be losses very easily themselves. Hoping not so, as we still, once again, do have a chance, but... I have to imagine we have to win at least two of the last three, maybe even all three. really kind of depends on how the rest of the league plays. But, yeah, I mean, we're having a, a good year, but we might just barely miss the postseason. 
Hopefully you guys still enjoyed, which obviously, I mean, I did. It was a lot of fun regardless. Hopefully we can stay healthy, though, because once again, we had those injuries in the game. We missed them for quite a bit, uh, and we did much as we could, you know, without Waller, without Ruggs, without Incognito. That offense, without Jacobs, that offense, obviously, it drops down quite a bit on the totem pole. Of course, speaking of Ruggs and Incognito, should be back soon enough, hopefully week 17. If we have an option to maybe bring them back early, we might have to if we want to save the season. We'll see. But anyways, that is going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this one, once again, leave a like. Like I said, if you guys are new, maybe subscribe. It would mean a ton. Uh, it would help the channel out a lot. You can always unsubscribe later. It's all free stuff. And, of course, if you've been watching the channel for a while now, I appreciate your continued support. Maybe uh, follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Jumpy Care, plays for all non modern And then twitch.tv slash Jumpy Care, where we stream this series like eight out of ten times, basically. Uh, so... Hope you guys uh, did enjoy. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.